I don't know why. I don't know why I do the hands every time. What's up, everybody? Welcome to or welcome back to Tuesday Bro Newsday. We've gone through a lot of changes on this show, and what we do nowadays is we sort of unpack some news as it relates to the world of vaping, tobacco, tobacco control, tobacco harm reduction, smoking, uh, cigarettes, nicotine, all the good things in life. I am your freedom love and libertarian host uh grim green now joined by my far left fact checking subject matter expert danielle jones hi danielle jones hi grim green hi well, chat uh, yeah thank far you. left far left way far far left i'm basically um, a communist it's yeah, fine yeah yeah, that's 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 what makes it work. You know, we get no. the libertarian and the commie. That's what we're changing TBN to. We're the libertarian <laughs> and the commie now. That's what we're doing. Oh, no. Of course, I'm just joking. But now we have Danielle Jones here. In fact, today we have a very special guest um, that I'm going to bring on right now. He's going to hang out with us for a little while. Uh, Matt Cully is here. Oh, Matt's on the right now. Hey, look at that. Hi, Matt Cully. Am I here? You're here. Hello. Hi, Matt Cully. Thank you for coming on the stream, man. I appreciate it. So if Danielle's a commie and you're a, a libertarian, what am I? Uh, see, these are arranged poorly here. In fact, mm. let me fix this. We're gonna, You're going to go away, and you're going to go away. And then we're going to add Matt there, and then Danielle there. So now Danielle's on the far right. I'm on the far left. And you're in the middle. You're you're much more of a centrist. And that's Matt, a you can be the Green Party. How about yeah. the Green Party? <laughs> you know, Dan, I know Danielle's politics, and in Europe she would be considered center right, but in yes. this country she's a commie. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, yep. pretty much. Pretty much. That's just uh, you know that's the way that's the way politics work. You talk a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you speak about like political issues and and the such as like on your on your Facebook and, and on oh, some Matt's social media platforms, Facebook don't you, Matt? Are lit. <laughs> I, I do sometimes. I definitely keep it off of, you know, my YouTube channel, except for lives, obviously, once right. in a blue moon. Yeah. But uh, I, I do once in a while and and about fifty percent of the time I regret the posts I make. Yeah. Yeah. Well I feel like you have to have a lot of like free time to be able to make a post on Facebook and then keep up with everybody arguing with you. And then yeah, well, like I've had, nights, comments. <laughs> yeah. I've had nights where like I'm drinking a little whiskey, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm feeling it a little loosened up and I'll, and I'll be like, that's a great fucking post. Let's do this. <laughs> and, and then you, it gets a little, it gets a little spicy, but then, you just know, like when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to wake up to a shit storm, delete. Yep. I'm definitely taking this down so I don't have to deal with this tomorrow. Yeah, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. You, have you yeah. had some like good, successful like Facebook threads where you've had like a good discussion with somebody and maybe some minds have been changed? Or do you find that that's not really the where Facebook? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that that's like a small minority, but there's definitely I I enjoy political discussion and like no matter where you're at on the on the political spectrum, if you know your politics fairly well and you know, you know how to have a good debate, like I respect it. I respect, you know, I understand where you're coming from. Right. But, you know, 95 percent of, of the threads definitely aren't like that. <laughs> but uh, Especially in this day and age when we can't even decide on what's true and what's not, you know, as far as like just ground level facts. But yeah, it seems like that. And, and you know, what do you think causes that, that we can't tell facts from fiction anymore these days? Everybody says fake news. Well, I think it's tough because, you know, I mean, our, our for decades and decades, you basically only had a few news sources and, mm -hmm. you know, those were strictly much more just to the point. It wasn't very opinion based. And you could even say that maybe some of those things we were told weren't true, you know, in the 60s or 70s. Yep. But nowadays, there's so many different information streams flowing and so many different ideas and conspiracies. And like, it doesn't mean every conspiracy theory is not true, um, but uh you know, I think a good portion of them are, but you have those people that will believe every alternative news, right. Alex Jones types of type of thing yeah. that's said. And uh, it, it's tough to really like navigate through it all. Like none of us know exactly always what's factual, but I mean, you got people that still think the coronavirus is fake and stuff when Oops. we know people that have died from it, right. you know? And so right. it's like, 
it's that then then it's tough to to go on from a conversation when you can't even decide on something like that. Do you think fact check like uh, we've talked about this on the stream constantly how you kind of have to like fact check and do a little bit of a deep dive on most everything that you come across now. Yeah. Like everything and it's really just vaping that's opened my eyes to that like well, okay well now I got to now I have to do a deep dive into this to see if what this person do you think there's an element of like burnout to it? Like people just, no, I, I heard this and that's what I think. And I, I'm tired of thinking about this. I'm tired of doing a deep dive into this. I'm tired of discussing this. This is just my point of view now. Well, I think people want bite-sized news, but yeah. I mean, most things, there is no consensus on a lot of things. Not, you know, like for example, economics, Sure. you could read from multiple different economics professors and guys that are like, top of their field and they don't agree with everything like mm -hmm. what how to do this or you know how to how to stimulate economic growth so i mean when you a lot of it's really you opinion so you have to look at all sides of it and figure out kind of where where you stand if you want to have your own opinion on it yeah but uh yeah i mean definitely there's also a trust factor in there where mainstream media has lost a lot of trust and i think a lot of it's valid because uh, you know they did everyone's fishing for clicks now and views and, yeah. and uh, eyeballs. And so they make everything as sensational as possible. And they give a lot of half truths or don't cover the whole story. Like we saw with vaping a lot. And yeah, so there's, the there's, there's no nuance to it. Yeah. There's no nuance. There's no context. And so, uh, you know, then people lose trust over everything they hear on the news. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's like, even when you're talking about the economists and, and things like this, not agreeing, I'm at, a, I'm at that spot right now where people are talking about, well, the $15 minimum wage. And I, and I read stuff that goes, oh, this is a tremendous thing. This is going to be really, really great. And then I read all this other stuff from economists and other people that really feel like they have their shit together who are saying this is actually a really, a really, really bad thing. It would be bad for X, Y, and Z reasons. And then I'm here going, okay, now I don't know where to step. I don't yeah, so I mean, the way to, the, the way to like approach that is is like you look at history and what happens in other areas when they've raised raised the minimum wage. Right. Most of the fear mongering, you know, everyone goes out of business, prices go up tenfold, has never happened. Every time sure. minimum wage gets raised, um, there is some downsides to it, you know. But I mean, it's wages need to keep up with inflation, and they tend not to do that. They haven't done that since the eighties, and yeah. so sometimes people need to get a little push. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was, I don't remember who I was talking to about this, but when I worked for Starbucks, which is a great company, I would continually get cost of living increases. Um, I, and I would get normal yeah, yearly raises, raises like right. on the dot. Yeah. I got it too when I worked there. Yeah. And cost of living increases where you just randomly, you're making a little bit more money. It's like, oh, it's more expensive to live. So here's some more money for you to live. And then, I, you know, I see Starbucks doing this and then I see other companies like, you know, Amazon not doing anything like that, almost like the opposite. They just they just keep it yeah. at the lowest possible level. And that's, uh, you know, I don't think that's like Walmart. a thing that the government can fix. I think yeah, that's I mean, I definitely hold feel for like, accountable. I feel for the, you know, the one thing, the one argument against a minimum wage is like, obviously cost of living is like vastly different all over the country. And so, you know, maybe some small little tiny business in Arkansas mm -hmm. that's all paying their, their, you know, I'm just throwing that out anywhere in middle America, that's all paying their employees like 10 bucks an hour. Um, it could financially hurt them quite a bit. So I, I get that side of it, you, you know, but usually in the past when we've had minimum wage increases, whether it be in certain, you know, like Florida just did it themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been other states that have done it the the effects are pretty negligible but it doesn't mean that there's not real world concerns for for some small businesses yeah i feel like there is and i mean i didn't mean to just talk about the minimum wage increase everybody but thank you for being here we're just going wherever the conversation huh. goes i guess um yes i don't remember where exactly i was headed with that <laughs> well, I think the truth of issues like this is that it's not cut and dry. Like, right, sure, minim sure, raising the minimum sure. wage isn't going to be catastrophic for everyone, and it's not going to be amazing for everyone. for everybody. Right. Everything has 
some pros and some cons, like everything in life, right? Mm -hmm. And you kind of have to decide what the net harm or net benefit is. And then you have to, you know, adapt and adjust to those things. Like if we decide, okay, we're going to raise it, there's going to be some downsides. So let's like try to mitigate those and try to like work on those. But you have to you have to acknowledge all sides of it. You can't just say like, no, this will happen. Therefore, no, or right. this, and right. therefore, you know, fuck right. everything else. Like well, it doesn't, it just doesn't work that way. And, well, there's and, also like other effects you don't even know for a couple of years. Like for example, it, you know, everyone going from 10 bucks to 15 bucks an hour, that means they're going to spend more money. And so maybe you own a vape shop and you pay everybody 10 or 12 bucks an hour and you're freaked out. But that $15 an hour raise that, everyone in your community is getting that gets right. minimum wage, you might get more business. So you just don't, it's, it's always, it's kind of tough to say. Yeah, it's tough. The hardest, the hardest thing for me is the value of the labor. And that's what I keep coming back to is I read this story of this, of this guy, he lives in Northern California and the poor dude's working two jobs just to pay his bills. He works one job, 10 bucks an hour, works one job, nine bucks an hour, right? If he were to get a job that was $15 an hour full time, then he would only need one job. The problem is he has no experience in anything. So now that that job is worth $15 an hour, he is suddenly not worth to pay $15 an hour. So now this poor guy either has a choice to try to get a $15 an hour job, which he's underqualified for, or no job. And, and yeah. that's a hard spot. Do the qualifications like, move up though? Like if if 15 is the lowest that you can pay someone, sure. the qualifications for that job, let's say we're talking about McDonald's, for example. And so we're talking about somebody who works on the food line at McDonald's. Right. The qualifications for that job don't change just because the required pay by the government changes. Right, right. right? But the so, value of the job doesn't change. Like that person still needs to earn and be work worth working for $15 an hour. See, I have a disconnect when it comes to like your self-worth as a human is tied Mm -hmm. to your job. Mm -hmm. Like I don't necessarily agree. Right. I don't. Well, and who's to say that that job isn't already worth 15 bucks an hour. He's just not getting it. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. Right. No. And then a lot of people freak out, but like a good, somebody made a good example on Twitter the other day, like, Hey, you know, the Taco Bell prices are, you know, are the same in DC as they are in Texas or at least very close. close. It just so happens that the corporations aren't making as much money, you know, from those, from those markets. And when we've lived over the last, you know, three decades, four decades where corporations are making record profits, you know, that's where the finger needs to be Mm -hmm. pointed instead of all this infighting at the bottom, you know, like for scraps, like you have to point, it's not to say that there shouldn't be merit based jobs and people shouldn't be able to get rich. They absolutely should be, but it, it does need to be like controlled to an extent, you know, and in the the kind of economy that we had in the forties through the seventies, basically anyone that was willing to work their ass off 40 hours a week, right out of high school could afford a house, a car to take care of their family. And so I think there has to be like a, a, a baseline there where like anyone that's willing to work hard, can have a living wage. And then if you yeah. want to keep, you know, getting more and more skills or going to school for different degrees, then you're going to make more and more and more. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, and I agree with that. I, and this is something I would be interested to hear from you on. And I promise we'll talk about vaping at some point. What, how do you, what's the, you know, what's the idea of this universal basic income? How, how does that rub you? How, how does that rub you in what direction? Universal basic income. I got to pay you for existing. Yeah. Just pays you to exist. I think we're going into an unprecedented times with things like automation and uh, and there's going to be a lot of jobs lost over the next like decade for sure. You know, the people will use the example, you know, like Andrew Yang used the example yeah. of truck drivers. But there's so many jobs that are going to be lost no matter what happens with minimum wages. You know, you can't stop you know, whether you want to call it progress or just technology progressing, you know, companies are going to do the most efficient things they can and they're going to do what's the, you know, best experience for the consumer. So whether it be self-checkout right. stuff or whatever. And so there is going to be a point there where, you know, some people are going to get left behind. And that's where I think something like UBI makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, you can't necessarily expend, expect the 60-year-old 
truck driver to, uh, you know, all of a sudden, you know, like people were saying, like a couple of years ago, people were like, oh, just learn to code. You can't expect right, everybody yeah. to all of a sudden learn, yeah. you know, computer jobs and shit like that. So yeah. I, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it makes a lot of sense too. Uh, and this is what makes me a bad libertarian is I'm actually, I'm kind of for this. I, I, I hate the worst feeling ever is losing your job, right? You get fired and suddenly you have no medical benefits. You have no health benefits. You have no income. You don't know how you're going to pay your rent, your bills, your medical expenses, your food, your anything. It's the, the most detrimental thing. But I think a basic, uh, like a guaranteed basic income would be good for the country because I think it would give people a chance to do something that they really want to do and could be really good at it. There could be an amazing movie director who exists right now who will never get to make movies because they're just worried about paying their bills. But if they had, if they didn't have to worry about that, they could focus on doing something great, like making movies or being a musician or being a philanthropist, politician, something. I don't know. It might get working people, in the nonprofit sector, working in for a example, nonprofit, building nonprofits. houses for people. Yeah, nonprofits are notoriously like their member, not the huge crazy ones, but right. you know the normal smaller ones. You're not going to make you know the kind of money that you would working in like the commercial industry or private sector. Mm -hmm. And how many people might consider you know taking a job that's for the common good? You know to help people, help society, help marginalized communities, help all yep. of these things, but because they have that you know backup income that they can afford to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, 100%. and keep in mind that there are some libertarians that are for UBI. I mean, back in the 70s when it first started getting thrown around, I forget the really famous libertarian, but he was for it. Um, so, you know, it, a lot of libertarians like that idea more yeah. than like some of the other social policies, some of the other welfare policies. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I very much. Yeah, I very much agree with that. Yeah, exactly, Sally. Yes, poor people just want to pay their bills. And that's the difference between giving $2,000 or whatever universal basic income to someone who will literally live off of it and recirculate that money into the economy and maybe use that to go out to dinner to help this restaurant. And then this restaurant gets money. You know, it's all part of the economy. And, you know, if you give that $2,000 to someone who doesn't need it, they're just going to save it and sit on it. It's not going to get circulated and it's not going to help the economy. So I think there needs to be like a cutoff of UBI. Yeah. The best like, way to as, stimulate as an, an economy thing. is giving money to people that spend it. I mean, just yes. like with stimulus checks and stuff like, mm -hmm. you know, they give it to people that are what making 75 grand or under. And, you know, a lot of people are like, well, why should we give it to people that didn't lose their jobs? They don't need it, but that's not the point. They're going to spend yep. it then, which yeah. stimu right. it's not just about helping each individual. It's about stimulating the economy as a whole. So you give it to people that will then push it out there into the, uh, into the ether, basically. Yeah. <laughs> into the ether, basically. Yeah. No, that's good stuff. I like that. I like being able uh, see, that's why I like having you on Matt. You always have like something, no matter what I throw at you, you're like, Oh, well, here's my thoughts on, well, we're on the subject. Here's this obscure thing that you want my thoughts on. What do you want to talk about next? Let's Good talk stuff. about oh, shit, circ man. circumcision. Circumcision? Yeah. Circumcision. Oh, I'm curious from I, the male perspective on this. I Well, I mean, we don't have to talk I'm about it. I'm pretty anti-circumcision. I am anti-circumcision. Really? Well. Yeah, I am. After, having, okay. after being who I am for 43 years, having the equipment that I do, I kind of wish I had just a little bit more of my penis back. It's... <laughs> Right? It's not come on. Thing, you know, yeah. Come on. It's not that I blame my family for for doing that to me because you know that was just like the the norm then like sure, that's what sure. you did. But when you really take away all traditions and everything away and think about it, it's fucking weird. It is you're super cutting, weird. You're cutting part of a little baby's dick off like yep. without their consent. Like if someone wants to get screaming when they're old, crying when they're you know, if you want to do it when you're older then feel free, but it just seems weird. <laughs> it is. It it doesn't seem weird. It's weird. Yeah. There's so just no what way about the that. argument? I'm I'm here as an observer asking questions because I do not have a penis, so I am merely okay. curious. 
Okay. Okay. So what about, cause I've heard, you know, this argument before and I don't have children and I'm not a boy, so I'm abstaining from an opinion. Sure. However, what about, the, so a couple concepts. First, I've heard that it is significantly more dangerous and complicated mm. to have the procedure done as an adult than it yes. is as a child it because is. you don't have all your fully formed blood vessels and all of these things. And then also there is a, and I know it's like sort of controversial, but there is an element of hygiene to sure, this, sure. that it is much easier to maintain, you know, the uh, altered apparatus than yeah. it is the natural apparatus. Yes. So I'm um, just, yeah, but that was like the argument back like in the day when you didn't, people weren't showering every day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, like, I think we're at a point now where like you can clean your dick just fine yeah. with the, with the hood you're on. You're not, yeah, you're not going to find I a boys, guy. I would see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It cleaning, your dick is the best part of the shower. A, you're going to be hard pressed to find a dude that doesn't thoroughly clean themselves in the shower. Very true. This, this like weird, like, oh, it gets gross. Or if you don't like, yeah, it'll, so will your armpits. If you don't, you know, take care of them, shower them, deodorize them, keep them fresh. It's, it's just the same thing. It's, it's a weird argument. It's like, we do all this human maintenance anyway. I have to cut my hair, cut my toenails, clean myself, trim my hair, work out, eat right, muscles, you know, fat and, yeah. and then, but, oh, we have to cut off part of your dick because that might get dirty. Come on. Yeah. I mean, I guess just my <laughs> biggest issue with it. And like somebody's saying, apparently Matt's uncut. No, I said earlier, I am. My, my son's not, but like my big issue with it is it's just like, it's, we don't know where the traditions are going to like, yeah. I don't think you should make that choice for your little kid. And, uh, and I feel like, you know, look at how much emphasis we put on like female circumcision. They're doing this to people in Africa. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. you know, but like we're doing it to our own little boys without their consent. And it just seems weird. And it's no, I'm not throwing shade on anybody that has had that happen to their kids because it's a tradition thing. Yeah. But at some point, I think we need to progress past that. Look, I agree. Now that we went down that little rabbit hole. Yeah, we should probably talk vaping. We now. should probably talk about something that's relevant to the world right now. Uh, I see a lot of people here. Appreciate you guys being here. If you have any questions that you want to throw at Matt, you can throw them into a super chat. In fact, I think I saw a few super chats come in. Yeah, part-time vapor just left me a big turd. Appreciate that part-time vapor. He also says, blowing mud is a great pastime. Here, so, Okay, so blowing mud, it's... It's an inside joke that's bleeding over from my Patreon. Um, there was one of my patrons, Matt Sinister. I'm not sure if you're here today, Matt. Uh, he made a joke about blowing mud, uh, and that's what he calls pooping. And so now we have this whole, it's like, it's a thing. Blowing mud I feel is like a great you need to get that checked, that checked out if that's your pooping. If you are blowing mud, go get checked out. Think, perhaps <laughs> and, uh, email your doctor. And get a bidet. And get a bidet. Oh, do you have a bidet, Matt? Oh, he does. Yeah. One of those okay. cheaper ones, like a, it's called a tushy. It's, <laughs> dude, it's, it's fantastic. It's only Shut like 80 up. bucks. Shut you can up. buy the more expensive ones that have warm water, but I found that I actually like the cold ones because it's like wakes you up, man. It's like a yeah. cup of coffee in your butthole. Just, it's a little brisk, isn't it? <laughs> That's brisk, baby. It's, it's fantastic. I could, right. I don't know how I lived without it for 39 years. Well, part time, get yourself a bidet. Uh, Matt will text you the link. Um, Joshua, that's very gracious of you. This 4th of July, Joe Biden wants to say Merry Christmas. I, I don't, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, I, could, I could see that happening. Why not? I uh, uh, got another one here from part time. If DJ was in the middle, she would be a rose between two thorns. Oh, how very poetic. How very poetic, part time vapor. Appreciate that. So, Matt. Are, you're not scared of your YouTube channel getting taken down? I feel like that's um, the big fear right now with every vape channel. It happened with look, Indoor. It happened with Robert Ellis, the armed vapor. It happened with Dash. I'm pretty numb <laughs> to that fear at this point because, I mean, we've been scared about that for A years really long now. Time. And, I mean, we've, you know, you and I have had lots of conversations about this. Yeah. I think, uh, I think that's, you know, channels need to be really careful. I think they're still getting, some of them still are using links that they're not supposed to be using. And, yeah. and, and yeah. I think that they, you know, it's not to say that YouTube couldn't just decide they're going to wipe out um, vaping content, but what, it, what I've seen so far is they're really strict about the link stuff and they've, they've hit, 
alcohol channels and gun channels and uh, yeah. uh, weed channels for using links to sites that sell those products. And so you got to be really freaking careful about that. Yeah, you have to. And, you know, there was some a few people were doing uh, like a loophole with the links where they would link to a different website, which then had the link like an affiliate link to shop. That was like a a, a loophole type of thing. Oh, yeah. But really, I, you know, I wouldn't do down. that either. I just I wouldn't mess with it at all yeah. at this point. Yeah, and so we think this is mostly related to the, the breaking of rules that have kind of ah been around for a while. I first learned about the links like two years ago, and um, for a while I went, I just spent time going through every video that I've ever uploaded since 2009 and deleting every link that exists in there. And then when that got too big, I just I paid someone, one of my patrons, Jeremy V, who does the timestamps. He's like, sure. And he took like a weekend and just deleted every link that I've ever put on my YouTube videos. Yeah. Well, and it doesn't, you know, I still feel for these guys that it's happening to. It sucks. I love Dash Vapes. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, like it's, they, they, you know, I think that they had taken links down on some places, but they also got hit for old videos or whatever. Um, and and so I, I think that, you know, you just got to be really strict with the rules. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I even told like the dash guys, like maybe Dave should start a channel, you know, with a different name or something. And like, you know, and, and kind of get back, get, you know, yeah. cause I, I don't think he'd, I don't think they'd take his channel down again. Cause the dash Vapes channel wasn't technically his. So if yeah. he started his own channel, then it was kind of more for yeah. their shop and Dave was kind of the face of it. Yeah as far as dash vapes goes. Yeah, yeah. And that would be a good idea. What bums me out the most about dash vapes getting taken down is he had such great content that oh, was sure. like this counterculture content that was going directly against things that like the truth initiative said, or that campaign for tobacco free kids says, or, you know, he talked about the retracted, the vape studies that got retracted and like, man, he had some good yeah. stuff on there that now I can't share. Yeah. And somebody you know. said here, Dash, we're taken down for harmful and dangerous content. That's a very generic thing that they give everyone and they yeah. give that to you even with links. And so, yeah, it's it's, you know, again, I, it's not to say that like, hey, guys, we're no problem. We're all good. You know, as long as you don't do links, because YouTube can change wh whenever the hell they want. Yeah. I just that's from what I've seen over the last couple of years when people are getting hit. It's because of that. Yeah. Yeah, it is because of that. Now here, Vic said, uh, Vic in with the super chat. I appreciate that. It says, uh, YouTube now mentions e-liquid and vape in the advertising standards. We are here to stay. Just don't use links at all, ever. I'm not familiar with YouTube mentioning e-liquid and vapes in the advertising standards. Are you familiar with It might with that, be in Matt? some of like their, it, I, I, they change that stuff constantly. I'll, I'd like to talk to Vic about that. It might be under like, you know, what's allowed advertising on, on YouTube. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think right now YouTube's like, we're going to wipe out all these channels. I don't think that no. that's what they want. No. They are covering their, covering their own ass. And a lot of it has to do with like, okay, say little Billy used a link he found to buy a vape or a gun and got it off of YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Little and Billy, some troublemaker, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, all this bad press comes at YouTube because, Hey, my 13 year old Billy bought a vape from your, from a YouTube video. Yeah, you know, they're, they're trying to cover their own asses. Yeah, they are trying. And that's the same thing that happened with the first adpocalypse. I mean, you remember that you were around for that when it was like they were advertising on like horrible execution videos and like car crash videos. And it's like Coke, coax the ad before a horrible car crash video and then all these advertisers went i don't want that my advertisement on this video so youtube overcorrected and then we got adpocalypse and then we got adpocalypse 2 and now do you even monetize your videos matt your reviews yeah but i get the little yellow symbol yeah so it's like i only some adver advertisers can basically opt in or out of of the stuff that's yellow you know mm -hmm. they know that it's like you know more uh, uh, adult you know, or controversial, adult, or something. yeah, right. adult or controversial content, and so you know, I definitely don't make the amount of money that I would make if it was green. Yeah, you know what's crazy? What's crazy is is that 
because I've been getting more into whiskey lately. Like that's my yeah. new hobby. I've been collecting like bourbons and stuff oh, like nice. that. But a lot of like the whiskey channels, like I talked to one of the guys, they always get the green monetiz- monetization yep. uh, symbol. And the only way they get the yellow is if they have a cigar in their video. Really? Yeah, because a lot of them will do like cigar whiskey pairings. So th- interesting. I, that is really interesting. That is really interesting. Technically, by the guidelines, I would think that they would have to be yellow too. But For apparently, booze. YouTube's going a little easy on them. And yeah, I know vaping with Dick. Technically, we're on Adpocalypse Four now. Yeah, that's that. That sounds about right. Additionally, what I was going to say is alcohol channels, beer and bourbon channels. They don't have to age restrict their content either nope B- but 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 i do and you do i don't age restrict my content you don't uh have you gotten like uh in uh god what uh, what's the word i'm trying to think of where they just age restrict it for you i got one video done and it was on a vape watch thing that that oh, you oh yeah the you watch amulet the, the only reason i don't and just so people know i it's not that i want people under age to look at my videos, but if you age restrict, it makes it less discoverable on yeah. Google as a whole. So if somebody's searching about vaping on Google, your video is not going to show up on, you know, in, in the, yeah. in the search results, if you age restrict it. Well, that too. And just not everybody that uses YouTube ha- uses an account. Like yeah. if my video gets posted on Reddit or something and it's age restricted, you'd have to leave Reddit go to YouTube and make sure you're signed in and then you can watch the video. And yep. for a, a smoker who's just watching YouTube videos or whatever, you know, they're not going to run across our videos. They're not going to get that information. And then if they do, it's just like, it's like the TPD. It's just another step between them and getting the information they need. Yeah, exactly. I didn't even have a YouTube uh, account until I started the channel. I used to just go on there and watch videos. Oh yeah. Same. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, Wow. Yeah. See, that's really interesting. And that really bums me out. And it happens to me too. Like, and I only use that Reddit as an example, because that happens where I'll find a video on Reddit and I'll say, this video is age restricted. And it's like, okay, you got to close Reddit, open the link in YouTube, you know, and then you can watch it when you're signed into YouTube. It's just a bummer. And they do it without warning. Now, when you're monetizing your videos, you have to put them in a category are we using the same thing using the same drug paraphernalia category to put your videos yeah. in Matt? Yeah. That seems ridiculous to me that I have to do that. And I've been trying to, at least my contact at team YouTube, I've been trying to get them to add some sort of other category, but it's like yelling into the wind. Yeah. There's, they just basically lump us in with, with other um, non hard drugs, which you know what? I don't mind them lumping us in with weed because they're mm-hmm. not going to be banning weed stuff anytime soon. Nowadays, they, I know they did a couple of years back, but now weeds kind of solidified itself. So if they want to lump us into weed, as far as advertising standards go, that's fine with me. Yeah. It feels weird just personally as like a personal note clicking. Yes. This video has drug paraphernalia. In yeah. It. And just that verbiage that like, I hate that. Drug paraphernalia is an RTA drug paraphernalia. Technically, I, I mean, guess. technically, kinda. Technically, kinda. Nicotine's technically, a drug. Kinda. Nicotine's it's... a drug, but then that means a coffee cup is drug paraphernalia. I mean, if you want to go down that road, yep. a, a, a coffee grinder is drug paraphernalia. At that point, hot water becomes drug paraphernalia because you're using it to brew your caffeine in your home caffeine brewing lab. See, when you use scary sounding language to describe coffee, it kind of works both ways. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Like if they made a separate category, what they would do is they would then lump us in with tobacco and cigarettes and shit like that. Yeah. So then it's like, it yeah. doesn't feel that much better if they did, did that anyway, they'll, they'll never make like just vaping its own category. It'll be like tobacco products yeah. and then they'll do They'll do yeah. vape stuff under that. I guess if given the opportunity or given the choice, I'd rather, like you said, I'd rather be lumped in with soft drugs like weed than be lumped in with tobacco, cigarettes, cigars. Yeah. yeah. And I just hate drug paraphernalia. That bums me out. I hate saying that. 
And the market in the United States is all wacky too. Matt, you've been doing uh, the unsalted line. You do that. Where's that up in Canada? Dash Vapes, the company, makes yeah. it for us. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that's been doing... I still haven't got to try any of it. If you're wondering. It's been doing okay, but I mean... <laughs> If you want to send him some, Matt. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'll send you some. Just COVID just kind of derailed everything. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like it was right when it launched, it was like when all of a sudden like the COVID fears were hitting, no distributors were buying it. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, it was like really bad timing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that sucks. But it's, has it been popular? I mean, how's the feedback on the unsalted, like doing a non cloud chasey e liquid? I think people have really liked it. It's just getting it out there. Yeah. It's tough, you know, especially with, you know, PMTAs and stuff like that. Like getting a vape shop to, to want to pick it up. It's, it's hit and miss. Yeah, it is. It is hit and miss. Do you find yourself vaping more mouth to lung when you have like a mouth to lung ish, uh, geared line? I, even before that, I was vaping more and more mouth to lung just because of, you know, like so many of the devices we review nowadays are, are mouth to lung. And so like, I'll like, for example, when I'm sitting at my desk here working on my computer, I'm editing a video or something. That's more so when I'm like blowing clouds or whatever. Sure. When, sure. I, when I go like today, I had to just go drive 30 minutes each way to get my son. Then, you know, I brought the Caliber G with me and like, it's just nice and easy and, and simple. Yeah. So like, I still crave like the big vapor, but mm -hmm. it just, it kind of, you know, when I'm out and about or something simple, this is, this is nice and easy. Yeah. You don't need to bring a stacked tube mech with a 30 millimeter RDA in the car with you. Is that what you still roll with? <laughs> <laughs> only, yeah. Only in the car though. Only when I'm driving <laughs> in the car. How often do you vape mouth along? Lately it's been. For like the last two months, it's been almost exclusively. Like I keep, I don't know, I think I have three right now, like cloud chasey setups just for that same, I just crave it. It's not necessarily yeah, like even the nicotine. A, when you want a lung full of vapor. Yeah, you just want a, a, lung, a huge lung rip. I, I have to be able to do that. And it's funny because when cloud chasing first started like coming out like lung inhaling, I was very like standoffish towards it. I was like, no, mouth to lung. You know, that's cardo tanks. That's what I vape. Mouth to lung. That's the way you should vape. I was like a, a little bit of a mouth to lung elitist. And it was it was like a hard push to push me over the edge of rebuildables and, and RTAs and RDAs and stuff like this. And then now fast forward however many years and I like crave that big cloud sometimes. Have that's you crazy. tried this little thing from Inikin? Yeah. It, yeah. It's like, it almost, I said this in my video because it went up today on this and it almost like makes me feel like guilty because it's so cigarette like, it you really know, like is. I haven't smoked for like seven, eight years. And so it really gives me that. What? So what Matt's talking about, check out his video for this. What's it called? The Inakin uh, filter. EQ filter. EQ filter. And it's an Inakin pod, and basically what they've done is taken like a squishy, I don't even know, it's like a fake cigarette filter. It, right? it has the same type of yeah feel as a cigarette filter, and they give you a bunch of them in the box. Yeah. But it's still a pod, you know, it's not a, it looks kind of like a heat knot burn, but it's not. It's it's, not. it's a pod system. And uh, you know, these little things are basically your your drip tip. It's a weird little squishy drip tip, and that's really just for mouthfeel. I guess. And, you know, well, and I get it though. Like, think about it. Like, okay. Think about like back when you first quit smoking, like if the first thing you tried to use was like a jewel or something like this, yeah, then it would, it would feel really weird. Cause yeah. you're so used to that little tiny circular thing. Yep. So like it, it makes a lot of sense for people that, that are having a hard time quitting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I mean, look, anything we can do to make these more appealing, it's already, as well as vaping works, it's sometimes still difficult to get like a smoker. Like it's different on the internet when you make a video or you reply to an email and you say, I hope that works for you. It's different in real life. Like talking to my mailbox guy, John, he was a smoker. And so we tried everything, disposables and pods and 
all different nicotine levels. And finally, what helped him was the Icos. I, I gave him my Icos that I bought in New Zealand. And he's like, this is really, really good, really, really good. And it's like even just something that simple of a different shape in your mouth could be what changes that person into a vapor. You never yeah. know. And so it might seem dorky, like this dorky little filter thing, but it that could be the difference between someone yeah. picking up vaping and someone not picking up vaping. And it's got a really tight draw. I don't know if you put the, did you put the little plastic piece in your, in the bottom of your, no, I haven't. Piece? Try that out. That tightens the drop even more. And then, and then, uh, um, you get a really cigarette like, you know, draw. Yeah. It's already fairly tight without it. I like it both ways, but with it in, it's, it's very tight. Yeah. It's still pretty tight to begin with. It's that's what she tight. said. Hey, oh, that's what she said. I, I have had issues with mine just soaking up liquid, those little filters. Yeah. See, that's where the black piece comes into play because it separates between the filter and where you're and the chimney. Mm. And so it keeps it from getting soaked with liquid. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. How much farther? You, I mean, how much threw farther? threw it away, didn't you? you threw I did. That little I threw it away. away. I threw the little black piece away. I'm going to have to open a new one I almost now. did that, too. I almost did that, too. And then I was like, I was like, maybe that's for something. <laughs> like, is it for pushing the piece back in? Or I thought it, it was go? just a tool. You never know. Like, all these companies, they sometimes include weird little tools that's very specialized. You know, no, this is just a little thing for releasing your battery. Always read the directions, Always folks. read the directions. Yeah. I guess so. But otherwise, you've just been cranking away reviews. I know you built a deck. I haven't seen you on like Twitter. In fact, the last time you were on this program was at the end of 2019 when we were talking about Evali and the rally. Oh, yeah. It's been a minute. Yeah, I've well, we bought a house in we moved in in May and um I started doing a lot of projects and stuff like that. And I got, you know, really into like stock trading and stuff as well. Mm. And I was just, you know, it's not to say that it's okay, but I was so burnt out after 2019 and all the fights with vaping and shit. <laughs> and then COVID, COVID came along yeah. and it was just like, I just got out of the, it was like Twitter was fucking making me too uh, anxious. Yeah. I'm going to get back on, especially now that like, we have Biden and there's a new Congress and stuff. I'm sure there's going to be a plenty of things to fucking bitch about. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's kind of like one of those, once you get out of the habit, you got to like get yourself back into it. Yeah. You got to, got to just jump back in. And I mean, this is something that Danielle and I frequently talk about. It's like that first for a long time. It's like first thing in the morning, it's like you turn your alarm off and you open Twitter. And yeah. You just start getting mad. Instantly. Yeah. I mean, I, I've had, I've literally had panic attacks in my bed. Just not even just Twitter, but everything, right? You get a bunch of freaking notifications. You got shitloads of Facebook messages and you got all a bunch of emails and there's a bunch of news notifications. Oh, look, somebody just stormed the Capitol. Like, <laughs> yeah. and I'm just like, what the fuck is going? Like I, my, my heart will start going fast and stuff. And like yeah. anxiety is a bitch. It is. And it seems to be like unavoidable just because of the state of the world. I mean, apart from bourbon, which you've mentioned that you're, that you're becoming an avid collector of, what do you use for anxiety? I mean, what do you use to video games, well, bourbon, pornography? What are you into? What's your vice? I mean, there's, a, I, I mo, you know, it's no secret cause I've talked about it before on my channel, but I was, you know, an opioid addict for like eight years. And so, back about, you know, pills, not heroin, but you know, it started with my back and then I got addicted to them and, uh, back like three, maybe four years now, I finally got off of them and, and went to, to, uh, addiction therapy. And I still mm -hmm. see an addiction therapist like once a month. And so that's been helpful. But ever since I got, I got clean, you know, I've always been a kind of anxious person, but that, yeah. you know, took it next level. Yeah. And so I finally went on an SSRI like a year ago and that's helped a little bit, not much, but, uh, you know, meditating, doing things with your family, mm -hmm. taking your mind off, you know, and phones are like just one of the worst, the worst you know, with, with me, my anxiety is always like the, you know, the lowest when I'm in the moment and I'm doing something, whether it be a project or I'm mm -hmm. hanging 
out with people in conversation or whatever. Um, you know, I, I get stuck in my own head and then a phone makes that really bad. You know, you, when you're on your phone for a couple hours and then you start stressing about all these different freaking things and you got to yeah. stay busy is a huge thing um, with as far as fighting anxiety for yeah. me. No, that's a yes. That's a <laughs> you never. I'm the same exact way when you're in it and you're working and you're doing a project and you're doing it and you don't have time to have anxiety, you know, cause you're in it. And as soon as you're outside yeah. of it and you have like a second to reflect or think or really let your mind wander, that's when it seems to get, you know, worse, exponentially sure. worse, worse. Like worse I tend to actually do well under pressure. Like when, yeah. when something bad actually does happen, I'm fine. Like I'm, I'm let's fucking fix this or let's do whatever. It's the dreading something bad happening yep, yep. that, that gets, gets me, you know, like what, what yeah, could happen? Yeah. Type of thing. yeah. Same, say I'm raising my hand. You can't see me, Matt, but same, same. that's me. I'm like the ultimate, I, I struggle with like generalized anxiety too. And I used to be medicated as a kid and I, I have like a pretty intense phobia. And so I've become like the queen of like distraction as a coping mechanism. Yeah. Cause that's like the only way, you know, I've been able to survive with a lot of this stuff. And I actually, not a lot of people know this, but over this past summer, I decided to start exposure therapy for my phobia, which is a pretty intense uh, situation. It's but, basically, you know, it's, it sounds so my fun. It's not fun. And I, I had my weekly session yesterday and oh my, okay. So my phobia, you guys, if you don't know this, I have, and it's, it sounds funny. I understand. It sounds funny. I have phobia of bugs, um, oh, really specifically like spiders. I really have a problem with spiders, but it's sure. a generalized bug problem, mm -hmm. but it's not like a funny ha ha. It's a like phobia for like which I have been medicated and have had fear paralyzing fear like panic attacks screaming crying like not cool situation i meet a lot of people who are like oh you don't like bugs let me show you a bug we won't be friends anymore <laughs> don't <laughs> this is not funny like it is a yeah, real we will i say be phobia <laughs> because i mean phobia i yeah. don't mean i just don't like them like yeah. this is a clinical situation yeah. and it well, got and really it's like a your your brain, if you think about it as like almost like a machine, it, it, it you have these like feedback loops, and once you connect something to to a bad mm -hmm. thing, it's really hard to to get over that. So like I don't know what it's like to you know have a phobia of bugs, but like I've had you know um, uh, performance anxiety, like social like we never used to have this, but with my videos the last couple of years. I'll get like shaky and my voice will get tight oh, and I really? talk, and I talk louder and it's like it's not even like I'm necessarily nervous but because it happened once or twice then I dread that happening again. Yes. And so then you have like this weird feedback loop to where um you know like oh I hope it doesn't happen and so then it's even more likely to happen. And so like <laughs> that's part of like cognitive behavior therapy and like trying to like kind of break those those habits which is obviously easier said than done but it's yeah. tough. Yeah. No, it's crazy. We watched a video yesterday. So I'm doing teletherapy, obviously, because COVID. And so a lot of this has been video work. I've had to go like my husband and I have to go hunting for bugs on the weekends, trying to find some to like put in a glass <laughs> jar. Don't get me started on how like triggering that is. But we've done a lot of video work, right? Photos and video and stuff like that. Sure. And the one that we watched yesterday, my my therapist is like triggered. You have no idea. My therapist seemed to think that this may have been the worst spider video that is on YouTube ever. She was like, I'm going to have nightmares now. Does, and we watched it three times. Does like, the exposure therapy like really help you turn a, a corner? Like if you, does it, it does. Do you feel like it's helping? Exposure I, actually, I find that so fascinating because there's so many I, things I'm, I'm scared of, like deep water and really tall buildings. And no, I can attest. OK, it is. You have to understand something. I do not enjoy this. Mm -hmm. It is not fun. Mm -hmm. I do not like it. Occasionally, I feel angry at my therapist yeah, for making I me bet. do these things like I don't like it, but it does work. Like mm. I've seen it. My husband has seen it like. She gives me a lot of like coping strategies for like, I'm good with general coping strategies, but in terms of like 
on the precipice of a legit panic attack. Like mm -hmm. that's really hard for you to be like, I'm about to have a panic attack. Maybe I should try to do a thing to like stop. Like your right, brain right. is like yeah, on fire. It's you like know fight what or I mean? flight. Yeah, absolutely. And so she like taught me about this thing called the tip scale. And it's basically if you're, you know, in full blown panic attack or you're about to have one, there's actually a few procedures that you can go through to try to nip it in the bud. Oh. And it comes part of it. One of them is a temperature related uh, thing, which is oh. really interesting because it's related to penguins. Right. So penguins, when they feel emotionally overwhelmed, mm -hmm. what they do is they actually dive deep into the Arctic water that like they go. Terrible real deep because it's very, very cold. And the cold shocks your system. It like hits every nerve ending and it basically is like a hard reset for your brain because it's such a shock. Whoa. And so she was like, if you feel that it's one of the things that you can try, there's a few, there's like a change of environment, right? So you feel sure, like if you're about sure. to have a panic attack, move to another room or move to another like location. But basically, but the temperature one I found really interesting. And we had a situation, right, shortly after she taught me this in the kitchen, there was a spider like hanging from the ceiling and I damn near like walked my face into it. It was like right here. And I like lost it. I lost it, right? Like I, yeah. I was, I would, but I had prepped my husband. He's my little trooper. And he, I told him about this. And so he whips the fridge or the freezer open, pulls out an ice pack and like puts it on the back of my neck, like instant, Calm you know, you like freezing wow. temperature like on the back of your neck and i like the, another one is deep breathing right so i had the ice Spike pack i'm like leaning over ice. the thing i'm like deep like deep diaphragmatic breathing and then i was like i'm okay did we kill the bug and it like <laughs> is cut it dead. off instantly there's there has to be a confirmed kill in my house like you know, don't just let these things disappear Chunkmeister has a good point, Danielle. He said, Matt is a penguin. That's why he's got the cold water bidet. And oh. that might be the fix for Danielle. We Maybe need I just need to stick my ass on a freezing cold. Every, every, every time. time you, yeah, like look at bugs while you have Hands the bidet off. shooting your ass. <laughs> yeah. No, but it does. And the exposure therapy to answer your other question, it does work because like, does if you think about, think about it, like I'm a huge fan of horror movies, right? Sure, I love horror. Sure horror movies. Yeah, I yeah. love scary movies. I like to be scared. I think it's fun. I do too. Um, but in the horror movie, the scariest part is always before you see the monster. Right, because once sure. you the see tension. the monster, it's right. like, oh, well, okay. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. exposure therapy. Like I've gotten really good at avoiding all bugs, mention of bugs, images of bugs, all right. of it. You, but that psychs your mind up right, into getting even see the more scared of it. Right. So the more I look at them and stare at them and do the things that I don't like to do, but the less like horrifying they are because right. I'm familiar like with it and yeah. I'm seeing it. You know so, what I mean? That's smart. There is some science Dang, to yeah, it. I need some exposure therapy. In it my makes life. sense for sure. It does make sense. It's we, crazy. And it it's really hard to do. My therapist was telling me that people who start exposure therapy, there's a really high dropout rate, like really high dropout yeah. rate. Like for the people that can do it and finish it, it works really, really well. But yeah. a lot of people can't, like they aren't willing to do it. I feel basically. like that's not completely, I mean, that seems completely normal and reasonable that people wouldn't want to do, wouldn't want to do yeah. exposure therapy, you know? I mean, but yeah. oh my God, this video, the, like there is a building and the walls are literally covered in spiders. And, and I'm not exaggerating to you. I'm not exaggerating. Like there's a video and they're like, they're falling in chunks from the ceiling. Of okay. spiders yeah, that then true. explode like and, that just, would, and it's real. It's I feel not like that CG. Would trip anybody out though. It's like even if I don't like, have a fear of spiders, if I'm watching that, I, I now I have a fear of spiders just from watching that. It's it's pretty it it's pretty of, crazy. Matt, do you remember when we went uh, river rafting in Zealand yeah. in NZ, and then we went in the cave with all the bugs? Yeah, those are freaky. Freaky as hell. They because it's like dark and like you only see them with a flashlight and like yeah. they lead they you down this big. cave and then they're like okay smell for a picture and then look around and that you're just surrounded by large bugs with large yeah, I'm like leaning up against the wall and whoa <laughs> yeah ha huh? bugs everywhere oh. mm -hmm. bugs all over everywhere off, off topic quick question for you what's on topic remember how after we went to the vape expo yeah. me you and bogan all got sick Yes. <laughs> I still to this, I still to this day wonder if that was COVID. It was in December. 
We I were, wonder that too. We were hugging people. I, I remember, and I'm not going to say who it was, and but obviously, like we know, like COVID started in China and stuff. Yep. And there were a lot of Chinese people there, and I hugged some of them. And I remember one person being kind of sick after I hugged her. And oh. I still, to this day, wonder if if that was COVID or not. Like, but I want to go get a uh, go get a uh, um, antibody. Antibody. Yeah, yeah. See, I haven't had the antibody test. I've only had the the whatever the normal the jam your throat yeah, test. One or, yeah. We should do. That. I mean, I was pretty sick for like two weeks. I, I don't wow. think you. I was you sick for like three battery. solid days. I, yeah. In, in in New Zealand, I was sick for. There was two days that were just I didn't want to get out of bed or do anything. I felt really, really bad, and then like but a day on either end that was like not great, and then I had to fly home. The kicker, dude. We flew. Well, I think you did too. Maybe you didn't. You flew what? into L.A. Right? Yeah, L.A. I flew back into San Francisco right around December, and then now they're saying, "Oh, there's signs that COVID was in San Francisco in December." <laughs> what if I was patient? What if I was patient zero and to bring like, it into the U.S.? Oh my I, God, Matt! What have you done? I shouldn't have said that out loud. What have you done? I sure I, I feel really guilty. I didn't even make that connection that all of us being sick in New Zealand in December could have been that. I mean, it felt like a. I felt sick, like a normal sickness. I don't know. It yeah, but some people get it worse than others. Like I had a cough for a couple of weeks and, you know, I was never like near, you know, short of breath or like near death or anything, but mm-hmm. like, you know, did you, everyone gets it differently. And obviously, you know, there was a lot of people that would have been bringing it into the country at that time. Not yeah, just us, not just us, but, uh, you know, yeah, but it's weird because Vanessa never got sick. So yeah, Casey, Casey never got sick. Uh, the only the last time I was sick was in December uh, at uh, freaking Oceana Vape Expo in New Zealand. It's the last time I've been sick as well. It's the last time I was sick. And we were definitely like, Bogan and I were sharing like cannabis back and forth together, just our lips touching the same thing. What if we had COVID, Matt? Yeah, because he got he had it first. He, he had like, it first. I thought it got, I thought it came like from him. I thought before. Bogan got us all sick. That was his fault. But it might have just been like, you know, kind of all of us getting it around the same time from that expo. I don't know. But you would have thought there would have been like a big outbreak in New Zealand and the news would have yeah. been all over that. But yeah, I don't know. Wow. Damn. Now I'm going to be thinking about that. Did I have COVID in De- New Zealand in December? I mean, the time kind of the fits. Time, dude. It does. It really does. <clears throat> And then after that, in February, I flew to Amsterdam and back with, and I didn't even think about COVID or anything. Just, nope, going to Amsterdam for a week. And I just flew there, was there for a week, came home. And literally like the day after I got home, it was like lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would still like if, you know, I would still guess it wasn't, but you never know. Yeah. You never know. That's the last time I was sick. Wow. That's really bizarre. COVID. Well, who knows? At least. Uh, so let me ask you this in, uh, you're in Montana. How's the, what's the vape climate in Montana? Like leg- legally, le- legislatively. Um, well, I mean, we had some scares last year where like the health department was trying to ban it without using the legislature. Then the legislature basically stood up to them. Um, which was nice. It was actually Republicans and Dem- more Republicans and Democrats, but yeah. even some Democrats stood up to him and, you know, basically didn't like the way that they were, you know, ma- making these executive decisions when it should have been left up to the legislature and the legislature had just voted down a flavor ban bill the last session. And so that was a, that was a scare. Um, Missoula, the city of Missoula just recently banned flavors, Oh, but now they're, there's a bill that they're trying to move through the legislature's back in session. There's a bill they're trying to move through, which would basically preempt any cities from having their own rules. So it would make that Missoula law, you know, like it would make it go away. Oh, interesting. It it wouldn't allow the cities to make their own rules like that. And, you know, like Gianforte is now the governor, you know, obviously like I don't agree with all of his policies, but he's pretty damn libertarian on drugs and vaping. So that's good. Oh, that Um, is good. And so so I think, uh, I think, 
you know, we're probably going to be fairly safe here, but knock on wood. Yeah, but knock on wood. Well, I know that Montana, that, there was that discussion of that, like that permanent flavor ban, right? That's what they were talking about is if this flavor yeah. ban went through, it would be permanent. And I don't even really yeah, know what that means. Yeah, the department was trying to like permanently ban flavors. Just irreversibly. So even later on, if and when they were kind of trying to is, do like what Rhode Island did. Rhode Island basically banned flavors from my understanding without the legislature. The health department did it. Really? Freaking Rhode Island. That's kind of unbelievable. In in California, we're we're okay until 2022 because of the referendum, as, right? Assuming yeah. everything goes as, you know, assuming, assuming they confirm the all the signatures and everything, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, is like, see, like health departments have pretty vast authorities if something is considered a health epidemic. So sure, they sure. used, you know, things like what Gottlieb said and things the Surgeon General said as their excuse, like they're, they're saying this is a health epidemic. They're saying that, you know, teens like flavors. This is what we're going to do, you know? And so, so that was their, their whole like, you know, legal justification for it. Yeah. It's kind of unbelievable. I can't stand that. I mean, and what do you even, I don't know. I mean, it's, this it's is one of those, annoying. like, it, it's like you have to just fight the fires as they pop up. We can't get ahead. That, We're yeah, just constantly just putting out fires. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what we've been doing for 11 years is putting out fires and mm -hmm. not even putting them out. Well, like a few buckets here. Sorry. There's something else. I got I got to go throw my water my three buckets of water on this giant fire before I run over to this giant fire with my three buckets of useless water yeah. for this giant fire. I definitely enjoy like fighting stuff on the local level more though. Obviously I don't live in California so that's a different scenario but yeah. in Montana, you know, you can get the, these people on the phone. And so I spent hours on the phone with Democrats yeah. using all my Democrat talking points, you know, for mm -hmm. them. We're on drugs, mm -hmm. harm reduction. Look at the UK. UK has universal health care and they're telling people to, you know, and that sticks with a lot of them. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so, like, it's more enjoyable because you can actually get to the source as opposed to, like, these federal bills. I know California is probably a lot harder. California. To, yeah. To I mean, the person, you're not going to talk to anybody. Yeah. It's like, yeah, my representatives are Feinstein and Kamala Harris. So I'm not Feinstein's calling horrible, man. Like, she's so old she's now. too, And she's trying to she's trying to, like, ban did you watch the uh, that uh, um, I that did Night Stalker? Night Stalker, and that'll make you no. dislike Feinstein even more. Oh, really? Okay. I I don't need another excuse to dislike Diane Feinstein, but I will gladly accept it. She's just kind of an opportunist. And, yeah. Isn't that? You know, even, like, even most people on the left don't like her. I don't know why she keeps getting reelected. I didn't vote for her. I've never voted for Feinstein. Never. Feinstein? Feinstein? Not mm -hmm. even sure. But when yeah, she was up, because she's our state senator, right? Yeah, she's our state senator. Yeah, when she was up, I did not. Yeah, no. Agree, don't, uh, but she wins anyway. Don't, I don't yeah, know. Don't vote for her. And I like what you said, Matt, about if you're talking to the Dems, you use the Dem talking points. That's something that we've brought up on this stream a lot: is tailoring your argument to whomever you're talking to. And I try to, I really try to stress and push that vaping isn't a partisan issue in that. You can't just rely on the Republicans to help vaping in the same way you can't rely on the Democrats yeah. to help vaping. They're both right. equally bipartisan against us. And I don't know why we can't be equally bipartisan in getting the information out there. But there's a lot yeah. of partisanship. I mean, it's, it's definitely fair to say that, like, the Democratic Party as a whole has been worse on vaping than Republicans have. Mm -hmm. But there's been a lot of Republicans that have been shitty on vaping, too, and a lot of bills that have been proposed in different states that were, you know, sponsored by a by a Republican. And, you know, you just got a lot of people think, well, they're never going to change. But Republicans for a long time, they're the only people that wanted to legalize weed were Democrats. Mm -hmm. Now, Republicans are softening up to that. And like you talk to talk to them more and more. They're they're bringing up war on drugs and tax revenue and stuff like that. And so yeah. it, you know, just because all, you know, a good portion of Democrats might be against it now doesn't mean that you won't be, they won't change over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. And there was, there was like a, 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 a city commissioner, whatever they call him, the, uh, 
um, in Missoula with the with the flavor ban. And she was like one of the few Democrats to vote. They, it still passed, but like I was just really happy that she voted against it because she was pretty damn progressive, very much so like war on drugs about mm -hmm. like social causes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like it got to her like she understood like you know, this is who this affects. This is bad news. It's, you know, we don't want to go down this route. And she even said like, when, you know, when I emailed her say, thanking her for her vote, like I got to stick to my principles. So she felt that her progressive, you know, far left or pretty damn left principles were damn telling yeah. her not, to, not to vote for the flavor ban. Oh, okay. Yeah. See that. And yeah, yes, you have to tailor the argument. We've said this at least a thousand times, yeah. you know, depending on who you're talking to. And we have that, uh, you know, that Democratic think tank that did the vape study. That's a, policy that's Institute. The Progressive mm -hmm. Policy Institute. Yeah, that we can use. See, that's why Danielle's here. She's the fact checker. She's the subject matter expert that I think is a really good thing to use for the Democrats and for the left. And you kind of just have to know your audience, I guess, in, in who you're talking to. And for the next four years, it looks like we're going to have a predominantly blue Democrat, uh, you know, Congress, Congress and administration and yeah. administration. Granted, Biden is much more center, moderate. moderate, much more of a centrist than than a lot of the, whatever the Democratic Party is. So they're the party of science. They're the party of harm reduction. I do think that we can have some ins with them. Uh, and I'm hoping that they'll be just as successful as they were when we were threatening Trump's votes. Because yeah, he seems to really just, care about that. You got to find the people that don't like Bloomberg. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> because, I mean, he has his tentacles all over the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. You know, he was once a Republican, became a Democrat, brought all his money over to the Democratic Party. And there's some some Democrats that are just freaking owned by him, yes. you know, and owned. uh even in some in some state uh, uh, politicians, you know, they get they get lobbied hard by these different Bloomberg groups, and then the obviously all the body parts orgs and shit will lobby them hard, and so they have a hard time. Like you know, Matt, you're bringing up good points. Like I agree with you, but American Cancer Society just told me this. Yeah. Like, yep. And, and so it, it's hard to they a lot of times they don't know what to think. Like. You know, you'll bring up the UK argument and then they'll be like, yeah, but the, the freaking pave moms told me that UK does this, this, this. And, the, you know, it's just yeah. like this constant back and forth battle of information. Yeah. Constant. And how do you change? I mean, that's the eternal struggle, right? Like, how do you change minds? How do you change minds of the public? How do you change minds of the politicians and the lawmakers who are the ones passing these bills in this legislation? I, th I think like the best thing to do is really to go after the principled ones that like, even if they know like, Hey, you know, these different body parts orgs are telling me this, you know, those people were also wrong with the war on drugs and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, you have to really go after that war on drugs thing with a lot of them. Like yeah. if you ban it, people are, it's, it's a very popular product. People aren't just going to stop using it. You're going to end up uh, criminalizing people. Yeah. That's usually the poorer folks. And a right. lot of times the people that get, get uh, uh, arrested for that will be the black and brown folks. Like you really got to freaking hit hard on those principled issues. So it's yeah. like, even if you don't want to agree with me that, um, it's harm reduction and it's better and that people should, you know, start vaping instead of smoking or whatever. Even if you don't want to agree with that, you still have to agree that it shouldn't be illegal because of bad things that'll happen if it is. Yes. Right. Because prohibition never works. And most Democrats know or acknowledge that. Yeah. I, I mean, some of them, when it comes to vaping, though, it's like the prohibition, does, they just, it's like a brain erase or something. They go, no, we'll just ban it. That, that I know. And it's because they, I mean, that's their like nanny state coming out, right? And they right. do fight against that, right? Like they know harm reduction and they know prohibition is bad, but then they also like to like control stuff. So you this... have to draw these parallels with, you know, alcohol and drugs and tobacco. Like they, do they right. just see tobacco like so differently? They just see it as like, there's no right. redeeming value to it with alcohol and things like that. They can sort of see a redeeming People value, but fun. with cigarettes, there's just, it's just, they're murder sticks. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. no one should use them. And it's just, this is what we should do to save people from themselves. Yes. And you have to calm them down off that and say, you know, and, and 
a lot of it is humanizing people who smoke, right? And I always use that. Alex Clark taught me about people first language, right? Instead of using smokers, because that can be othering, yeah. right? People who smoke, right? And these are real people. These are people with families and brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers. And they, a lot of them want to quit. And this is a tool that can help them, you know, do that. And why would you want to, you know, stand in the way of this, yeah. stand in the way of them trying to help themselves? Like, why yes. would you do that? Yeah. They yeah. also get stuck too, because like, you know, they feel like it's like predatory business. And so like big yeah. tobacco is preying on. They're these, all about on, addiction and they want us addicted. They're, they're preying right. on these poor, poor innocent people and it's big business and whatever. And it's like, you know, an argument I make too, is, is like, Hey, you know, you're for legalizing weed. You think big business isn't going to be taking that over over the next, next couple of decades. <laughs> yep. Like, and uh, you know, what are you going to want to ban it again? Like, that's what happens when you look, you know, obviously with alcohol, there's a few big ass companies. That's what happens. Yeah. Well, and there comes to a point where you, you have to just let adults do what adults want to, to do, you know, at a certain point, even if, even if vaping was bad for you, which it's not, I should still be allowed to do it as a free American. <laughs> I should say, I know this is bad for me, like eating McDonald's every day. I know this is bad for me, like drinking a fifth of vodka every single night. I know this is bad for me, but damn it, I get to decide if I'm going to let this bad thing be bad for me or not. And that's not anybody else's decision. Bodily and autonomy. Bodily autonomy. And exactly. And when there's a demand for something, people are going to find a way. You know, a lot of them think mm -hmm. like, well, we banned flavored cigarettes and that was just fine well there was a very small demand for those yeah. like <laughs> very very small like but when you have you know 80 90 percent of vapors using flavors obviously they're not going to all just stop yeah or yeah it, there's suddenly just not going to be a demand for it anymore and we can see yeah. firsthand like they ban flavors in san francisco and what happens in san francisco people still get flavors from the black market and then cigarette sales go up yeah, i mean there's all kinds of black market shit happening in new york and massachusetts yeah now loads. you know with their bands. there's loads. guys that that are just like selling freaking e-liquid out of their trunk yeah i mean i've t talked to people that do that they just it's whatever it's the full full-blown black market it's like hey text me how many bottles you want in three milligram and I'll meet you here and we'll do this transaction a, in my it's trunk. It's like a drug deal. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know people that do it too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's temporary it's though, right? It's temporary though. It's sad, but it is temporary though. I mean, vaping will be, it has to be legitimized at some point. It might not be in the next five years. It might not be in the next shit. I don't want to be that depressing, but at, at some point, it's going to be looked back on like, remember when this governor created a bunch of criminals and black market drug dealers for nicotine? It'll be looked at shamefully, yeah. you know? I mean, I think like the, the problem is, is like once something is a, is a law, it's very hard to like, just like we've seen mm -hmm. with marijuana, it's very hard to backtrack on that. And yeah. so, you know, there might be a time five years from now, whenever, 10 years from now, where the federal government just straight up comes out like the UK and they're like, yeah, I mean, this this is clearly like helping, our smoking rates are going down, our, our lung cancer death rates are down, like this is a good thing. But even then you're gonna see some fucking assholes, probably in California, no offense, um, <laughs> that'll be like, okay, fuck? but we're still not going to let them vape flavors, but then yeah. they might just turn their head the other way and let everybody sell them without making it, you know. Like they did with cannabis, right? right. Like there yeah. was a while where it was only medically legal, but the cops didn't care. Yeah. I it mean, was everywhere. It was everywhere. And it's so, look, here's the thing about medically legal is you just go get a card. That's it. It's nothing. You make an appointment, you get a card, and you're like, okay, now the weed's legal. Yeah, exactly. Because of an right. appointment. That's it. Yeah, magic. You go talk to a doctor. When I got mine in Montana, the doctor was wearing flip flops. Looks like he's gone to multiple <laughs> dead. Yeah. Looks like he's gone to like multiple dead shows, Grateful Dead shows. Right. And it's just yeah. like, so what are your symptoms? Well, I got back pain. I get some headaches Done. sometimes. <laughs> <Anxiety>. <laughs> Sounds good. This should definitely help you, sir. Boom. Yeah. Well, it's just one of those like, 
it's it's almost like a superfluous process. If you're going to make it medically legal, why not make it recreational legal? Because making it medically legal is making it recreationally well, I mean, legal. All you're doing is you have one other step in there. Step. You know, it's like yeah. short fills. It's like, no, you have to put the nicotine in. It's like, no, to get your weed, you have to make an appointment first with a doctor, and then you can easily get your card, and then you can easily buy weed. But they if feel you talk better to someone about like if you talk to someone like Ethan Nadelman, who's been on the front lines of this since the nineties and was, yeah. you know, one of the big architects of legalizing weed, um, he'll tell you that that was all by design. Like they just knew that you couldn't go from zero to 100 right, right. away. And right. like society wouldn't adopt that. But if you slowly ease them in and first you start using the excuse of it's for the cancer patients and it's for these terminally ill pill people, oh. you have to slowly, nor you have to slowly normalize it. They knew it was going to fail if they went from like banned to, Hey, everyone gets weed everywhere. Right. So right. It, it, yeah. was a, it was a process. Yeah. Well, never yeah, you needed grandma to start <laughs> fighting for it, for her glaucoma medicine. Yeah. First. Who is extremely, exactly. Who's extremely like relatable and understandable and a compassionate, you know, person. And I feel I like mean, they're not wrong. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit what's been happening with vaping with Lindsay Stroud and the golden oldies capital tour, where it's like, <laughs> hi, I'm Dave. I'm 78. I haven't had a cigarette in two years because of butterscotch flavoring hi i'm susan right. i'm 80 i vape chocolate flavors and i haven't had a cigarette like that's what that's who we need to be the face of vaping rather than any any of us maybe yeah. maybe danielle but none of <laughs> neither of us but that's what we need p vaping needs pr pr bad how are we doing on time it looks like we're running out but there was a couple of super chats that came in and there was one question for matt specifically about MTL tanks here, if I can find it. Um, Sexy King Phil, appreciate you being here, bro. He said, MTL for life. That's how I quit. Matt, what's your favorite mouth to lung tank? Mine's the Vandy Vape Berserker V2. Matt, what's your favorite MTL That's tank? That's a really good one. I mean, I'm not going to bring up my own products, but besides that. The cog. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the, I mean, I've always been a diehard K Fun fan. Mm -hmm. Like, I love K Funs. Those are always great. Um, Todd from Scotland, mm -hmm. he sent me his uh, tank. I'm going to be reviewing that here really soon. That's a good one. Gotta want to try that. I don't, I don't think I have like a favorite favorite, but there's the one that always sticks out in my head is the K funds, just because like it's been like years of like different K funds and like they're just that that vape experience you get off of it's amazing. Yeah, it is really good, and the new K funds really good. I know you didn't ask me, sexy King Phil, but I'm going to tell you. I'm going to agree with Matt that K-Fun is baller 9000. Pioneer RTA, all day long. And the new Cthulhu Artemis mouth to lung, it's displaced everything right now. It's all I've been using. I, I didn't get that one. It's great. I don't think I got that one. The when Artemis. did that come out? I don't know. <laughs> I just did a build stream for it the other day, so it could have been like within the last few weeks. Huh. Artemis mouth to lung from Cthulhu is a banger. Banger. I would say maybe arguably better flavor than the K Fun. Yeah. Now I got to yeah. get it. Yeah. Fucking companies, they put out a banger and then they like, oh, let's skip over Matt for our mouth to lung banger tank. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that happens all the time with me too. I'll review something and then I'll see a review a few weeks later of like the way better version of the thing that I just had. And I'm like, I feel like that too. I think it's just did, jealousy. You know, like you get something skipped. that other people don't get and other yeah. people get something they don't get. And you're like, why didn't they send that to me? I know. I felt like that for a really long time. People were doing bangers like RTAs and like all these AIO kits. And I'm, I want to try those. Why does everybody else get the fun stuff? So I hope that answers your question, Phil. Uh, Jimmy Wolf, Bloomberg is the tentacles in hentai. Yeah, just everywhere. And if you know what hentai is, then that's funny. And if you don't, I don't know. Don't hentai. Google it. Yeah, Google it. No, not. definitely no. Google it. Do Google not Google it. hentai. Uh, honey bunny. In private that. without children. For, yeah, don't do it at work. Um, well, I think we're going to start wrapping this up. We're just about done with time here, man. But I appreciate you guys coming out, hang out, listen to listen to us talk with Matt. Matt, I appreciate you being here. I know you're a busy guy. You got another deck to build or? No, shoot, it's winter in Montana. <laughs> I'm not doing shit except for trying to lose all the weight I gained over the last like yeah, six months. That's the struggle. 
That's the I struggle. ate way too much yeah. bad food last year. Yeah. From about August, from about May until now, I've just been gaining weight. And it's coming. Yeah, it's to the so point funny because it's like, you know, during fits. this time of COVID, that's when you probably want to take care of yourself. But <laughs> yeah. like exercise, work out, eat right. Oh, let's, let's have a dram of whiskey and eat <laughs> some fucking burgers. Yep. Let's eat some fucking burgers. Well, uh, I wish I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you can. Uh, Technically, live that can, keto life. But it would uh, be bad for true. me. It would, it would be, be bad, bad for, for me. I need uh, to. I have to live that keto. Had another super chat here from Pat. I'm gonna, I just call you Keen. I just call you Keen because I can't pronounce your first name and I don't want to disrespect you, my man. Uh, he says, I'm praying Ireland goes the same way as the UK. Uh, and that's a lot coming from an Irishman with vaping. Yeah, Ireland is once a, a big old flavor ban in Ireland, I believe, recently. That's a recent development. So, Or is Look, Ireland trying to ban flavors? I don't even think I heard about that one. Yeah, there was something recently that came out from Ireland. It's in one of my Chrome tabs somewhere. But yeah, Ireland is uh Ireland's going through a rough spot now, you know. And it's and like I England I'm worry I worry about England. I worry about the UK because I know they have a lot in place as far as like, you know, the National Health Institute and the Royal College and uh, you know, Action on Smoking and Health and all of these organizations. But then you have Bloomberg and the campaign for tobacco free kids starting yeah. to spend money in the UK. And that bothers me because they don't need to change the minds of the scientists or the doctors or anything. All they have to do is sway public opinion. And that yeah, is when things problem. get sticky. That's the tentacles thing, you know, like you get, he's the got tentacles. his tentacles into the uh, WHO and they, they go into third world countries and shit like that. And it's just like, yep. What is your- funding in front of him here, yep. here. Yep. Look at this funding. You just have to yep. do what we say. It's, it's pretty fucking gross. And, you know, it's like it's it's not just like vaping either. Like so many people hate Bloomberg throughout the world for various reasons because he's just a snake. And like he is. when he has certain causes, he'll go in there and he'll throw his money around to get his way. Yeah. And, and, he, and he is shameless completely shameless about it. And, you know, we should have known back in the 90s when he wanted to ban large sodas in New York and the New York Times put him on the cover. It says Uncle or, you know, uh, Nanny Bloomberg. And he's like wearing a dress. And it's like, Bloomberg, yeah. don't you know, I mean, I he's like Mr. Mr. Burns from The Simpsons or something. He, Just he's legitimately Mr. Burns. Just the old evil dragon sitting on his money and using it for evil things. Yeah. Well, and somebody said Bloomberg is coming out with his own vape device. I, I would be careful with that one because the, the whole community is throwing that around a little bit. And it, it's it's a little we, – we need to make sure we stick to the facts. And, yeah. you know, he is part of an angel investment firm full of hundreds of investors. And one of the products that that investment firm uh, gave money to was a pharma uh, vape device that was yeah. trying to go through a pharmaceutical pathway. You know, my money would be on the fact that Bloomberg doesn't even know that thing exists. The hail. You think but, so? Uh, yeah, I'd come on. The guy's got so many different things going on. Like, you know, he probably gives like a hundred million to this angel investment firm and he doesn't know shit about what they're doing. Right. So, I mean, it's not, it's just, it's not it's that not you can the bring it up. argument we have. It, no. Yeah. It's not that you can bring it up because it's not completely false, but it's when people say Bloomberg's coming out with his own vape device, that's pretty misleading. And a lot of people say that. It's true. I mean, it was it was. I mean, they referenced that a little bit in in uh, No Nicotine in the You Don't they Know did. Nicotine movie. They referenced they that did. even a little because yeah. it's Matt's right. It's not untrue, but you know, it's not the strongest thing in our arsenal. We have yeah. better things. Like it's a factor, and sure, you know, as like a side thing, maybe you can, you know, but it don't sure. lead with that. Like sure. it doesn't necessarily. It's a good thing to know. But we have we have stronger weapons. Well, it's and, just like it, it's nuanced, like to where you know it's it's he doesn't even run the firm that the investment firm. He's just an angel investor. It's, it's like if you're a billionaire and you know you give twenty million a, a year to some firm and like they invest your money to these different startups and you get some some money back every time something goes well. Like you might not know everything that they're doing, so. You know, if he was to like promote it or something, like, or, or, you know, or, or 
or say in an interview, like, mm -hmm. yes, I'm investing in the hail and it's going to be really right. good for smokers. Then that would be like, yeah, we need to pounce on this. Yeah. Microphone. Now it's pretty, right, evident, right. you know, painfully black and white. Painfully I feel that's the, I feel the same way when things come out occasionally and sometimes it's merited but like we you know when people are like oh the surgeon general we found out that his 401k was invested in tobacco stocks like oh, yeah, you yeah. guys my 401k may be invested in tobacco stocks like I don't manage yeah, that don't really... I have a guy that does that I don't know what the hell I'm invested in yeah. I could be invested yeah. in like it's not, murder uh, sticks yeah, for it's all not, I know it's not a more it's not a moral uh, investment there your 401k it's a it's a Returns and you're not even investment. controlling it, really. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So you do have yeah. to take some of these things with a grain of salt. Like yeah. if they've actively like there's I'm sure Matt or somebody knows more about stocks than I do. But there's certain kinds where you just like hand it off to somebody and they do stuff. And then there's oh, yeah. certain kinds where you're like strategically picking things. And if it were one of those, then yes, sure. Like get mad at them. But if it's the other kind, like, I don't know, I could be invested in like nukes for all I know. I have no idea what's in that portfolio. Nukes, like, just part of the military industrial complex. I right? don't, maybe. Dang. I don't know. You, you heard it here first, folks. Yep. Danielle, Danielle is helping you build know. nukes. Helping I mean, build those you know, weapons of mass destruction. Start that internet rumor. I don't Dang. care. <laughs> what if your money is going to biological warfare with, uh, spiders that are going to infect the whole world with okay. a then virus you're okay with it spider i mean virus. <laughs> if we're gonna murder all bugs i will invest in that no i won't because they're like freaking keystone species and you need them to balance uh, yeah, the ecologicalness them, of the yeah, world the and, ecosystem definitely uh, needs bugs i try to say here's the thing i have an aversion to bumblebees like i'm fascinated by them and i like them but they scare me and so i try to save the bumblebees from my swimming pool and the other okay. and i always use like a tool like a leaf or a shoe or something to get the bee out. Right. And the other day I saw this bee just go flying, just zoomp right into the pool, just right into the pool. Dive bomb? Yeah, straight in. And I didn't even think, I just reached in with my hand and grabbed him out. And I was like, I got you. And I was like, oh God, like I just, you know, I didn't even think in that moment, all I could think about was saving the bee. And then I didn't think about this like horrible, reaction that I would have you. to holding a bee in my hand anyway. Nuke oh, the bees. You got to nuke something. All right. So I guess we're going to wrap this up real quick, Matt, real quick. Give me just a couple yeah. sentences. What'd you think of the, you don't know nicotine movie and, and, and your part in it and how it came out. Um, I think that the movie was pretty good. I wish that the distribution was, was different, but it's not my movie. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> That's basically where I'm at. Yeah. I like it. I wish the distribution was better. Honestly, it's such a big movie that I kind of wish he had done a docu-series instead of a movie. That yeah, been four I think parts. it could have, for sure. It could have been four parts. I felt like it was going to end three different times, and it didn't. Yeah, we talked about that. <laughs> I felt that way, too. I was like, so we're done. No, we're not. So yeah. we're done. No, no we're, we're not. not. That, And I also noticed, uh, uh, Danielle, what you said about... Uh, like the narration we were talking about, there's a lot of narrating in it, isn't there? I am. I'm not trying to rag on Aaron, but some no, of the newer documentaries I've seen recently have zero. I feel like, as as somebody who's lightly a documentary snob, as in I watch a lot of them and I have a lot of opinions about what I like and what I don't like. Sure. sure. I feel like while there are times where perhaps you do need narration, um, I think that a really good documentary can stand on its own and tell its story without the need for a voiceover a narration. narration. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you good. do that. Right. And I think that, I think that Aaron could have done that with his interviews. I don't know if it's a stylistic choice or what exactly it is, sure. but I'm not a huge fan of a lot of narration in a documentary. Okay. Yeah, well, I get you. I get you. Well, damn it. We're out of time. You guys, Matt, thank you uh, for taking the time to come hang out. Thanks for having me, buddy. Yeah, I appreciate you. I miss seeing your face on the live streams. When are you going to do another live stream again? Soon. Yeah? I want to do some whiskey vape pairings. And uh, yeah, yeah, like I talked to you, you should come on and do it sometime. Let's do it. Something I'm down. Something fun and a little bit different. You yeah, know? I'm 100% in for that. 200% in for that. Do you want to pimp your stuff? Where can people find you, Matt? Everybody knows who Matt is. Matt. From SMM. Yeah, is Matt my from YouTube SMM. Channel. Yeah. It Subscribe, hit the hit the little Subscribe. bell button. 
don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. And uh, yeah, there you go. Anyway, one more time. Thank you, Matt, for being here. Thank you, Danielle, as always, for being here. Appreciate you, you and your far left. Uh, Gabe Claus, I appreciate you being here. Um, I'll have... I don't know. I'll have links for Matt's stuff down in the description. Uh, I'll throw the usual suspects as well down in the description. Things like the Canadian Va Vaping Association, the eSig US Intelligence, the eSig Intelligence Survey for the US, mm -hmm. the European Nicotine Survey, Casad.org, uh, uh, the GoFundMe for Hope. We're, we're still doing that. We're trying to get Hope a car, and that's hard to do. So I'm going to throw that down there. But listen, I appreciate you guys being here. Um, remember that no matter what anybody tells you, vaping is way, 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 way better than smoking cigarettes. If you're going to do one, vape in instead of smoking cigarettes and and just vape and, and don't smoke cigarettes. And uh, an and, and, and informed vapor is a uh, an effective vapor. Does that sound good? I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I like really it. I like it. An informed yeah. vapor is a... <laughs> It's a successful paper. Anyway, thank you, Matt. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, be excellent to each other, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.